Hi, I'm Mark Wilson, the Engineering Heretic. And today we're going to look at uh, threading tools for cutting threads on lathes. And here I have a uh, one of my uh, spring-loaded holders. And I'll just take this out and show you how this thing works. This holder here, it's uh, it's basically it's a it's a one quarter diameter um, tool steel in there, round. It's a, a um, quarter diameter hole through here and a clearance hole all the way back up to the back of it here. Now, because this is at a hook around here like that, this tool is free to spring a little bit in that direction. Okay, it doesn't vibrate. It's not vibrating up and down. There's no problem at all with that. What this tool does is it makes it a little bit more forgiving when you're cutting threads um, because if you take a little bit of a heavy cut, it will tend to just spring back a little bit. And when you finish cutting threads, you do a couple of finishing passes and the thread comes up very, very nicely indeed. So they just do a really, really good job. There's a six millimeter screw clamping down through here, uh, holding that there. The reason why I use round tool steel is because I grind my tools in a D-bit grinder and I, grind, I precision grind them to the angles I want. And this one here is a 60 degree included angle for metric threads and probably if I want to do UNC and what have you, they're all most of them are 60 degrees. I'm just going to put this back in here and I'll show you the other advantage with having a round tool steel, this. And that's the fact that you can rotate this tool to the thread angle. So I can actually rotate this at any angle I want. So if I'm doing a multi-start head, a very, very quick thread, I can rotate that around to the lead angle here to, uh, to adjust that. And that's why I use round tool steel. Um, it's just something I started doing. I started with quarter round tool steel a long, long time ago. All my, all my tool holders take quarter round tool steel when I'm doing fancy little cutters like this. So let's go over to the D-bit grinder and I'll walk you through running or grinding these particular tools on a D-bit grinder because that's the way I use uh, my D-bit grinder. I use it for a number of things but one of them is grinding uh, threading tools for lathes. So now we're at my D-bit grinder and uh, you'll notice it's a relatively new one. It's a Chinese one. I looked around forever to find an old one that was good, but uh, anything I could find that was old that was that was just uh, in such poor condition it wasn't worth buying. So I ended up buying a brand new one. It cost me about a thousand dollars, but it, it has all the attachments and it does all the things I need to do. There are a couple of issues with this grinder that I don't like, but that's just life when it comes to Chinese machines. Right. Well, what I want to do first of all is we're going to put our job in here and because I'm using quarter round tool steel, I'm going to set this and lock this up here around about there. I've got that set on zero at the moment and I have a little bit of an issue with my grinding wheel. I want to change the way it cuts. I want the outer periphery to cut here and I don't want the back end, it's a 60 grit wheel, it will tend to make, if I cut across the whole thing, it will tend to make my job rather hot. Of course, there's no cooling on DB grinders. Now, so what I want to do is modify this wheel a little bit. So I'm going to turn this on. And going to crank my wheel into the back. We've got our dime in here. We're going to crank this wheel out and dress heavily at the back face of this wheel. And a little bit more. Right. Now we have, and I'll wind that wheel back a little bit so I don't damage my diamond. So, and now we have the outer lip of this wheel standing out. It will still be a little bit too smooth for what I want to do. So what I'm going to do is roughen this up a little bit. I'm going to wind my dime until it just touches it and flick it across there to even roughen this up a little bit more. So now I've got a lip standing out that's quite rough. 
The next thing I'm going to do is turn this around 100, well 90 degrees to 270. And I'm going to grind the top face of this. And I don't use back rake on threading tools. I, they, or, or any sort of rake I have, just the level across the top. I find they tend to dig in if I put rake angles on them. So that's just what I do. We're going to bring this over here. That's about right there. We'll go back down again, lock this up, unlock that again. And now we're going to grind the top face of this. We'll set my stop around there. I'm going to grind the top face here. And of course we're only grinding on the very periphery of the wheel. So it's not going to get too hot. That's looking pretty good. So we'll go back to zero and have a look at this. There's my top face ground. Of course that's quite smooth. It's because I ran it over fairly slowly over that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my tool 180 degrees upside down to 180 and I'm going to make this here, down the bottom here, I'm going to make that negative 10 degrees and I'll have to just estimate because it's off the scale a little bit here. So we're just going to estimate 10 degrees here and of course my my angle of my thread, it's a, a metric thread, so it's going to be 30 degrees. So we're going to turn this around here to 30 degrees. There it is right there. Now, I've got this ready to go now, so we'll just, uh, we should be ready to go. Uh, let's see how this goes. I might have to move this a little bit. Slide this over a little bit. Yeah, I'll have to reposition this. That's the thing you end up doing with DB grinders all the time, is repositioning all the time. There we go, we'll lock this up here. Back this off here. And of course I can swing that through here. A long way from the locks here, hang on. That's better. Now, this is the trailing side of that tool. I want to do is grind a lot off this because I want this tool to be biased to the left hand side. Maybe a little bit more. Nice and smooth. I still get a good finish, even though I've roughened up the lip of that. Now, what I want to do is put this back up and rotate this. We'll go back, to, we'll go 10 degrees the other way. And now we're going to put our tool vertical. Well, back to vertical here. So, zero. And now, because I've got this cranked over at 10 degrees, I can do the relief on the front or the leading edge of my tool with pretty much the same set without taking it out here. Now, we'll have to reposition. That's just one of the things you have to do with DB grinders. Reposition all the time. Unlock that again, and off we go again. We're going to, re we're going to grind this here. enough we run out of travel. One of the pitfalls of DB grinders. Lock this up again. Move this over here, back down again, lock that up again, unlock that one and off we go again. Okay, now 
now we've got our tool ground correctly, but I want this to be able to grind or to be able to screw cut right up to a shoulder. And I'm going to put this back here to vertical again, here. Swing this back here to vertical, to, to, to zero degrees. And I'm going to grind the side of the tool here. Reposition. So they've only got a little bit of a land on the other on the side here on the on the leading edge. my tool ground ready to go so but one more thing I need to do that's pretty warm at the moment so we'll just wait for that to cool down a little bit take it out of the collar we'll put a bit of water on that to cool it down a little bit turn that off so now we have our tool ground, quite precision ground, but I want a little bit of a radius on this here. So what do I do is I just grab a diamond file and I file a radius on this whole front face here with a diamond file. Now that whole corner goes down there with a radius and there's my tool ready to go. Now, if I want to resharpen this, all I need to do is touch up that top face there because everything is correct all the way down here. So I can do multiple regrinds on the top of that to make my tool sharp again. And there's my tool ready to go in my holder on the lathe there, ready to cut threads. And I'm Mark Wilson, and thanks for watching.